Moral of the story, stop selling your shit. Just keep it. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing the first 10 bags in my luxury collection. I know. I've been collecting luxury bags for decades at this point, and I wanted to share the first 10 bags in my collection or items, and I only have two of them currently in my collection, but I wanted to share these because I thought this is a good video, just so you guys can see how my style has evolved, how what I like has evolved, and also the types of things that you may want to add to your collection starting out. So, if you guys would like to see the first 10 pieces in my collection, please keep watching. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do this list in chronological order. I received my first luxury bag when I was 13. I wanna say it was for my birthday. Now, let me also give you guys a little backstory. I have always been into luxury. I remember the first time that I really saw a plethora of luxury bags. It was on a trip to Miami with my dad, and I was like, oh my gosh, I, I love these bags. <laughs> my cousin at the time had the Gucci Jackie O. Now this is not the Jackie O that's currently out. This is like the vintage one, and I was just captivated by it. It's still on my luxury wish list currently, but there was something about the bag that I really loved, and you're gonna see in today's video that I really, really liked that hobo style, but it was something about that trip to Miami. I just feel like there were lots of women with designer bags, and I don't know why it caught my eye necessarily, but it did. And at 13, that's when my addiction began. And now I'm into my 30s. Now, of course, when I was young, these were gifts from my parents. So it's not like I was getting a lot every year. It was like, oh, it's your birthday or a special occasion. Here you go. I also realized that's not necessarily normal. Um, but I did just want to share my first 10 pieces. So let's get into it. The first piece I ever got was the Louis Vuitton monogram pochette accessoire. Now, now this is the first version of this bag and I'll be putting pictures of all these bags and items on the screen because unfortunately I don't own most of them. This was like the bag. So at that time, Monogram was very, well I won't say it's very, very popular because I don't think Louis Vuitton became really popular like it is now until recently and it's not like there were other 13, well honestly in middle school. There were some girls carrying Louis Vuitton, so I don't wanna say that like no one else was carrying it, they were. But at that time, the pochette accessoire was very, very popular. I believe they also had it in the Takashi Murakami collection, which is the multicolor version. But I really wanted that piece. So I think my mother got that for me for my 13th birthday. I love that bag so much. I wore it everywhere, I wore it out. And I wanna say at the time, it was in the two or $300 range. It definitely wasn't however expensive it is now, and it was also a little smaller. And then stupid, silly me, uh, maybe four or five, no, probably more like, almost 10 years ago, I sold that bag. Let me also say, if you are watching this video and you are just starting your luxury collection or you are taking a liking to luxury, please, please do not sell your first five pieces, okay? Reason being, you acquired them for a reason. You either really, really loved the shape, the style, the color, and if nothing else, your first piece is so special, specifically if you're gonna become a collector like I am, and I regret so much selling that bag. So I do want to add it into my collection, but I want the original <laughs> version, not the one that's out now. Oh, I hate that I sold that bag, but it is what it is. That was my first piece. I was 13 and from then It snowballed. I know I know <laughs> Okay, now I'm not sure if this was my second luxury piece, but it was It's it's up there on like the top the first few the Louis Vuitton croissant mm and this is one of the vintage pieces that of course is no longer sold. I don't remember how I came across this. No, no, no. I was at the hair salon one day and a woman was carrying this bag and I got in the car and I said, oh mommy, I want this for Christmas. Look, we're not gonna get into the fact that I was this child that was asking for these things. 
that's neither here nor there. But I wanted this bag. It was a hobo crescent shaped bag. And if you were into Louis Vuitton way back then, you know the exact bag I'm talking about. It was perfect. It was perfect for a teenager because it was small. It was a hobo. You just wore it over your, well, under your arm. I loved it. I loved it so much. And silly me, of course. So now, I don't know if I would necessarily carry that bag now per se, but it would definitely be something I would love to pass down to a future daughter or son or something. Like, I'm kicking myself, like, girl. But I love that croissant bag. It was so cute. They had it in a smaller size and also a larger size. And at that time, I really loved just a little shoulder bag or a hobo. That was totally my style. And yeah, it's no longer in my collection. Okay, the next bag now. I wanna say I got this bag in high school and I actually do still have it. So I have it to share with you guys today. It does need a repair, but this, and if you guys, like if y'all remember luxury, like Gucci from back in the day, you know this was the it bag and I wanted it so badly and I loved it, but it's just, we'll talk about it. It's the Gucci horse bit hobo. So this is what the bag looks like and it's called the horse bit because of the hardware on it. This is the strap. Once again, I loved a hobo. This is a hobo with a very short strap, so you wear it like this. I mean, it's definitely not plus size friendly now, so honestly, I do need to sell it because I, I can't even comfortably wear it anymore. But this bag was such a vibe back in the day. Um, like I said, it does need to be repaired. So there are two grommets on this side that are missing. And I just never took it to Gucci to be repaired because it's like, I'm not using it. Like, it doesn't even matter. And honestly, this bag is so old. I'll put the year that it uh, came out across the screen. It's so old, I don't even know if they would be able to repair it, so. I don't know, but this bag is very heavy, okay? This is old school quality Gucci. Like these are really heavy rings. You have this beautiful like whip stitch on the top. This bag is just gorgeous. You have your signature monogram Gucci all over. It's just so heavy. So I do still have it. I don't know why I decided to keep it. I mean, obviously I'm not wearing a bag this big anymore either. Anyway, I never really wore it because it was so heavy, but when I did wear it, I loved it. It's also like a black hole inside. I do still have the dust bag in here. This bag was just, it was a moment. Like this is a piece, darling. I mean, maybe I should keep it because in 20 years, when I look back on my collection, this is gonna be something I wanna be able to see and have fond memories of. But yeah, the Gucci Horsebit Hobo. I don't know what size this is or if it came in additional sizes, but it's huge and it's heavy and I don't wear her anymore. The next item that I acquired that I want to share is the Gucci, I wanna say it's called the boat, the boat pouch. I'll put the name across the screen. I believe I have spoken about this bag on my channel before. I want this back in my collection. This is totally my vibe right now, a little top handle bag. Now at the time when I received this, I don't think it was meant to be carried as a handbag because if I remember correctly, it doesn't have an interior like pouch or zip pocket. Not to say that every handbag has to have one, but I want to say it was a cosmetic pouch. It was lilac purple with the beautiful, most dainty leather strap for top handle carry. And I sold it. Like, so I also have a note to parents watching this video. I'm not here to tell you what to do with your money and your children because that is between you, God, and your family. But when you buy your children luxury items, I think you should also tell them like the value of it. Not to say that like I was this spoiled brat that didn't understand the value of anything, but it's different when you are a teenager and I was working at the time, but you don't understand the value of a dollar until you start paying bills. And so I wish my parents would have told me to just keep and cherish these pieces 
they did it <laughs> and so I sold it and now I'm like punching myself but that Gucci I want to say it's a cosmetic bag it's a fabulous piece one that I definitely want to add back into my collection you can use it as a cosmetic bag a going out bag it is just so cute and it was purple like <sighs> yeah <laughs> Clearly, I didn't make the best decisions when it came to what not to sell and what to sell, which is exactly why I don't sell bags anymore. Okay, my next bag, I don't know the name of it, but I'm going to put a picture on the screen. I'm going to scour the internet and look for it. Once again, it's by Coach. I really started out liking Louis Vuitton and Coach. And Coach signature print, when I was in high school, that was the it bag. Like, I had so many small Coach top handle bags. I just love them so much. But this was once again, what style of bag? You guessed it. It was a hobo. It was black and white coach signature. I wore it so much. It was just such a good bag. A lot smaller <laughs> than the Gucci horse fit hobo, but it was a very great everyday bag and I loved it and I sold it. Moral of the story, stop selling your shit. Just keep it. Keep it for five years. See how you feel about it and then make a decision. Because I feel like I went on a selling rampage and just got rid of so many things. And I'm a little, I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> but that coach bag was so beautiful. My next item is actually the bucket hat to match. My dad got me that, I think, Maybe he got me that on that trip to Miami. So maybe that was my first luxury piece, but it was a coach bucket hat. <sighs> what did I say? Stop selling the shit. Because bucket hats are really in right now and I was just on the coach outlet website looking at bucket hats, but I had a black and white signature coach bucket hat. It was so cute, it actually fit my big head really well and I wore it with my hobo bag. It was just cool and casual and Y'all already know what happened to it, so moving on. Oh, my next bag I'm really excited about. This is the Louis Vuitton Ellipse Backpack. Once again, you all clearly know my era by the bags that I was acquiring and loving. So I had this bag when I was in high school. There, was, there were actually two other women in my class who had this bag. I know, like, I know, I know. We were girls who were carrying Coach and Louis Vuitton I know, but I honestly feel like when your parents are into certain things and you see certain things, by nature, you're just drawn to it or maybe you have an interest in it. And that's honestly why I have a love of luxury. I saw my mother with Louis Vuitton and I said, oh, I like that too. I didn't necessarily understand what the brand stood for and the value, like I said, until I started working and paying bills. But um, I was honestly just really drawn to it. But anyway, the Louis Vuitton Ellipse bag pack oh my goodness do you guys remember the ellipse bag it came in a bowler and these are vintage bags now but it came in a bowler in a pm and a gm size i do want to add the pm to my collection there was a woman who had it in my class in college like probably a decade down the line and i was like oh like i love when i spot a good vintage bag but anyway the ellipse backpack had a curve to it it looked like an ellipse i loved it like that bag, I carried it all throughout high school. It was a backpack, but it also had a D-ring that you could carry it like top handle. Loved it, loved it, loved it. That was a great bag for like a teenager because you could wear it on your back. It's cool, it's comfortable. It wasn't too fancy, like, ugh. And of course I sold it. I no longer have it. Not to say that I would wear that bag anymore, but definitely would be something that I would love to pass down to someone later on down the line. But I will be getting that ellipse PM. I need to put that on my list. Okay, the next bag is probably the most popular bag from Louis Vuitton, Speedy. And I don't know if I had the 20 or the 25, but this is one of the bags that I carried in college. I loved it so much. I don't think mine had the bandolier. I don't think the bandolier came out until like later on when I was in college. The bandolier style was a newer version of the original Speedy, but I did have a 20. Actually, I think I got the 20 in high school, but I loved it. It was the perfect doctor style bag for a young girl or an older woman. It was not too big, not too small. The Speedy is definitely not my style anymore, so I am happy that I have what? Um, it's just not my style. I love a top handle bag, but it has to have an additional strap for versatility. But the Louis Vuitton Speedy, 
it's just a little saggy. It's not my favorite. So I don't, I do still own one, but only for the nostalgia. It's not something that I want to add to my collection. But when I was younger, it served its purpose and it was like the classic Louis Vuitton bag. So I definitely loved it. Okay, the next bag is a different one. This is one that I had in high school and I had to look up the name last night. I thought it was the name, but I wasn't sure because this is a bag that was an it bag, but now it's not popular, a Chloe Paddington bag. And I believe I had it in like a dark brown shade. So beautiful, a little heavy. Chloe just has really nice bags that are interesting. And that was a bag that was popular at the time, but it was just, it was like cool. I wanna say it's longer than it is tall. Um, looking back on it now it wasn't really my style <laughs> so i'm glad that i have since what sold it um but at the moment i loved it it was funky it was cool one of the few bags in my early luxury collection that wasn't heavily monogrammed because when i was younger i really liked monogram bags but as i'm maturing give me a solid piece of leather that's gonna stand the test of time but that chloe paddington was such a good bag let me know if you guys remember that bag like i know there are a lot of you watching who remember these vintage bags and I feel so old that a lot of these bags that I have are now vintage but it is what it is the Chloe Paddington that was it was a fun bag I think so and the last item that I'm going to share is actually an SLG and this is the second piece that I actually still have in my collection the Louis Vuitton vernis I think this is the color rose pop coin purse or key holder this is what it looks like in the pink of your knee. It does have a zip top with a key clay, which you can put your keys on. It also has a slit pocket in the back. I know there are some guys and gals who remember the color rose pop. This beautiful candy pink, oh my goodness. I remember when this collection came out, um, I couldn't afford any of the larger bags that I wanted, but I definitely acquired this one. And it is one of the few, as you can see, from my vintage collection, I guess you would call it, or items that I still have. I don't use this one too much because it is vintage and vernis is actually very delicate. The older it gets, it can sometimes get sticky and you can get a lot of color transfer. So I try to keep this one in great condition because I don't want to have any signs of wear. But this color, I mean, I love pink and I love bright pink and this is just a good one. I do think Louis Vuitton still sells a version of this. So I will of course link this one down below, but yeah. Definitely one of the first pieces in my collection. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, getting to know kind of how I started my love of luxury. It was definitely because I was in an environment where other people liked and had these things. I saw my parents with certain things, my family, and um, you know, your family of origin really influences the things that you like and the person you become. And so ultimately I was around these things. I was immersed in these types of groups and this is what I like. If I could give any advice to anyone, don't sell your stuff, okay? <laughs> Keep it for a little while and see if you really wanted it because it was in or if you wanted it because it was your style. I definitely regret selling probably half of the items that were in my early collection. But the good thing is that there's a pre-owned market and I can add them all back. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love you so much for watching. Leave down below any comments or questions you have and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. I don't want people in my